to that time of the year again. Um, welcome to church. We're about to engage now with what matters the most. I'd like to invite you guys 
to lay aside distractions, yeah, give, um, give people a cuddle, give people a high five, and then put your phones out the way and let's start engaging with the one who is already engaging with us. God is here. Do you believe that? Amen. Um, so let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Let's do that. Jesus. 
our judge and our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious light. Forever seated high. I believe in God the Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three and one. I believe in the resurrection. That we will rise again. Oh, I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that she. amazing that we believe in Jesus? Isn't it amazing that we believe in his name? Isn't it amazing what his name does? And isn't it amazing that we can pray? Can we just keep worshiping? Keep worshiping and raise your hand as we believe in a healer, as we believe in a deliverer, as we believe in a conqueror, as we believe in a restorer, as we believe in a wiper away of all sin. Father, I thank you that you are a meter of our needs. And Father, I thank you that you're a comforter right this minute for Johnny and Rebecca as they watch. We thank you that your name is Jesus. I thank you that your arms are wrapping around them. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the life of Johnny's precious dad. I thank you he loved you. I thank you he honored you. And Father, we stand and give you praise for that man. But Lord, we do ask that you heal Johnny and his mum and the family's hearts as they lose a precious guy to heaven. And Lord, I thank you that your name is comforter. Your name is peace. Yeah. Your name is faithful father. And Lord, we just look to you this morning. Father, we know there's lots of troubled hearts in this room this morning. And Lord, I just thank you that you are the answer to them all. And Father, we look to you. We look to you. Father, we thank you for jobs. We thank you that Steph's rejoicing for a new job. I thank you that as we weep with one, we can rejoice with the other because that's what your word says. Your word says. And that, Father, I just thank you that you are the answer of peace to this world. And Lord, right now, we just want to speak to our own hearts. We want to even lay our hands on our own hearts and minds and we declare peace to our souls 
peace in our families, peace in our home, peace in our loved ones, peace in our town, peace in our country, peace in our nation, and peace in our world. Father, I thank you that your word says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Father, I just thank you that there's no fear in you. And in prayer this morning, we focus afresh on the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Your name is great. We've been worshiping your name and we will continue to lift your name high. Let your peace reign in Jesus' name. Let your peace reign in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the spirit of worship, we're going to invite the host team up to collect tithes and offerings this morning. Um, this is very much a part of our worship. So um, host team, come on up and um, we'll send that around and we're going to continue to sing as we take our offerings this morning. I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection that Jesus comes again. Oh, I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in This is my desire to honor you. 
Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. Beautiful. 
Hey, it's such a good thing to be able to look out on some amazing faces this morning. So welcome to church and so glad to, that you could make it today. And uh, just to know that if you haven't kind of connected with us, but you'd like to, then we've got little cards at the back that you can just fill in your details, hand them to one of the hosts, and then we can pop you on the WhatsApp group or connect you with whatever you would like to be connected with in terms of groups and things like that. It just means that we can uh, communicate effectively. So that's great. We just want you to feel at home and part of what we're doing here in church today. Super. So here's, uh, here's a few things going on in the life of church. So one of the most important things is tonight. Yes, literally hours away. And that's our encounter event. And it's in Kings. It's in six, at 6 p.m. And it replaces our usual prayer meeting. So it is just a great time to be able to hang out and worship God together. That's essentially what it is. We call it encounter because we want to encounter God. We want to meet with him. And um, many of us know that when you have an encounter with God, it literally changes your life. Definitely for the better. And uh, I've had, you know, several times in my life where I've had real, like, blow you over kind of encounters. And, uh, and it, yeah, it's just, just an amazing opportunity tonight to spend time just hanging out in God's presence, worshiping Him. And it's in Kings. So that's great, isn't it? You'll be there. Yeah. We'll have some worship. Uh, you know, music in terms of leading us in worship and things. And then we've got life groups and small groups. They're meeting around the town during the week, uh, this week. So ask the hosts for details if you want to know about that. Youth is on in our station location on Friday night. And then the men's group is growing. So some of you might have, might have found yourself added to, it's called Forge Men. That's not because we're forgeries. It's because we're being forged into what? God wants for us. It came out of the Forged Men's Conference that we went to last week. So basically, we're using that group. It's a WhatsApp group to kind of build momentum towards what we can do as guys uh, in church. So if you've been added, then, um, you know, please stay. Uh, if you've not been added, then we'd love to add you if you're male. So if you can ask one of the guys in our leadership team afterwards or myself, that would be great. Uh, we've got um, round tables, uh, marriage sessions, development. It didn't happen this week because we had people not very well out of our leadership team. Duke explained last week we're going to do a dry run first with our leadership team and then we'll extend it to everyone else. Operation Christmas Child, shoeboxes are all being gathered together in Kings. Now, uh, we've brought some boxes here and we brought some leaflets here. So at the back, by the concertina information stand, then uh, you can pick up a box. If you want to give 50 pence or something like that, just for the cost of the box, that's quite good. We do need to pay for them. But, uh, you know, don't let that be a barrier. The main thing is that you get those box, boxes, get them filled. You can also go to a shoe store, shoe shop, and ask for some spare boxes. And they're always holding them back at this time of year for the shoe box appeal. So that's another way to do it. Uh, and then we've got the choirs being formed. So uh, you tell us about the choirs, please, Lydia. Um, all right. So we've got the information up here on the screen. Kids, thank you all for sticking around because this includes you. Uh, so we have a few opportunities coming up for our Christmas choir. Every year we have an event as a church called Simply Christmas. It's an amazing opportunity uh, for us to get together and have a fun celebration for Christmas. But it's also such an amazing outreach because who doesn't love some Christmas carols? So uh, last year we had an incredible choir. I was, uh, I was just amazed. And so um, my number is up on the screen. So what I'm going to ask you to do, usually we don't want you to have your phones out during church, but right now get your phones out. And if you're interested in being a part of the Christmas choir this year, um, you can take a wee picture of this or make sure to just message me. My number is there at the bottom. Um, I would love to get you involved. Even if you just have questions or would like to learn more, uh, you can message me to find out more. Um, adults and youth choir, we're going to be practicing on Tuesdays starting in November. Once you get added to the group, I'll put all 
all of the information about songs and everything else in there. Uh, and our event for Simply Christmas is coming up on the 9th of December. That applies to both our adults and youth choir and our kids choir. And kids, um, a lot of you were here last week and in Kids Church I told you all about an amazing opportunity that we have to sing at this year's Lights On ceremony in the town center. So on Sundays after church, we're going to be taking some time to practice a couple of songs. We're going to perform two songs. And uh, that is on the 17th of November. So parents, if you have questions, again, you can reach out to me personally. I'm in the parents chat as well. So you can reach me on there if you need to find me. Um, but this is just an incredible opportunity for us to gather. Um, this the, the theme of this year is so just on point. It's the theme of joy. And so we're really going to take on this Christmas season with joy this year. Um, thank you very much. So at this time, why don't we say goodbye to our kids? Y'all can head off to Kids Church. Adios, kiddos. All right. And I'll pass back over to Mark. Thank you. So speaking of Christmas, while the kids are heading out then, um, Christmas is on a Monday this year. I don't know if you'd realized so we were thinking that we would have like a Christmas service on Christmas Eve on the, or oh, maybe I'll just let everybody head off because nobody's listening. Well, you are, you're all multitasking, aren't you, actually? Okay, so we were thinking that maybe um, we would have the Christmas service on Christmas Eve. So that's on the 24th. Uh, which is the Sunday, and then on the Monday, which is Christmas Day, then we would be doing the Christmas meal uh, down in our old building. Probably it will be there, possibly we'll be here. We'll see how it goes. But um, does that sound okay? Would it be okay if we didn't have a Christmas morning service for once? So would you love to have a Christmas morning service as well as a Christmas Eve service? Oh, nobody's really bothered, so... <laughs> We can, we can decide whatever we want, dummy. Uh, so I, I think we probably, that's probably where we'll go, if that's all right with you. If you were too shy to say, then grab me afterwards and say, I want a Christmas Day service. And I might ignore you. But there again, uh, if, if people do, then obviously we can do that. Right, good. Last but not least, in fact, penultimate last but not least, then we're having a baptism session next Sunday. Now, this was just arranged this morning because we've got somebody who really wants to be baptized. And so we'll be down in the river uh, <laughs> because, because he doesn't care. He loves God and he just wants to be baptized, whatever the cost. So give him a round of applause. <laughs> he's somewhere here. There I don't know where he's gone. <laughs> so if anybody wants to join him, you're serious about your faith, then, uh, then yeah, by all means, join with us. But we'll be like quarter past uh, one, uh, like after we've had coffee and things. We'll head down to Nunham to the usual place where we do these things. And then uh, we'll have this wonderful baptism time. And let's pray that it's not chucking it down with rain and that the, flood, the river's not in flood. If it is, we will, health and safety will prevail. And we'll leave that until another time. But all being well then we'll do it. Yeah, good. Super. Uh, and last now, but definitely not least, and we're just going to honor Clive and Mavis. So would you like to step forward? You two, Eddies, you okay there, Mavis? We can do it down here, actually. <laughs> Super. Now, this was, this was sort of going to be your last Sunday, but it may not quite be like that yet. Yeah, Is it? Popping and pop out at the moment because yeah. the um, flat we're buying in Kelso, the ladies just died. So we're going to be in a couple of weeks, I think. Of, uh, yeah, it'll take time to sort through all of that. So it's a bit of a delay, which we're pleased about, <laughs> to be quite honest, because we're not looking forward to losing you. But then we won't totally lose you, will you? Because yeah. we'll be back quite often. But, uh, yeah, but we just want to pray for this special couple. And um, let's pray first. And then we've got a little thing we're going to do for you as well. But Lord God, we thank you for Clive and Mavis, for the eddies. And for Lord, the, 
strength that they've brought into church through their many years as being part of the River of Life Church. Thank you, Lord, that even before they were here, they used to travel all the way from County Durham every Sunday morning because they know that you'd, they knew that you'd place them here. And so, Lord God, we just honor them now. And we thank you that you're leading them into the next part of their journey. And so, Lord, we do release them uh, fully into what you have planned for them. And, Lord, we pray that you'll continue to strengthen them and to bless them, cause them to be a blessing in their new church in Kelso. And we pray into this uh, little hiccup at the moment, Lord, and we pray that you'll uh, smooth things through so there's no great long delay to this process. Lord, we love them, and we just pour out our love upon them as we thank you for the gift that they've been to us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't go away, because Morag has been hard at work. <laughs> Good to say something. We really just wanted to honor them, and what do you get? People that are trying to downsize um, and to pack up and clear out, but when we prayed about it, who loves this couple and just know that they need good journals to journal what God does and who doesn't need new pens to write in a new journal. So Clive, that is your lovely man one, okay, with your man pens. <laughs> and this is your beautiful girly journal with your girly pens. Um, and as behalf of a church, as soon as you get in, your new vase with lovely love hearts on the front, um, who doesn't need love hearts, um, is going to be filled with flowers that will send from the church when you are rooted. Does that sound okay? Yes, thank you. I needed a new journal. You needed a new journal. Fantastic. So I give them big love and hugs afterwards and just, uh, you know, try not to cry too much. Because <laughs> we will see them from time to time. Do you want to say anything? Yeah, I just want to um, thank everybody for all the love and the care. Um, especially Mark and Helen, we've been in the church, um, we're into our 27th year. And it's been such a blessing, Morag and Duke. They've been with us since the beginning and Edna. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everybody for the care, especially since our health has deteriorated. People have got behind us to help us. And just thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's my bit now. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just want to just say, it's always been a joy in this church. The body of Christ. Just absolutely wonderful. And I want to just thank you for the... I've started to fill up now, you see. I wasn't... But what's happening is because the leadership, the, the leadership in this body of Christ are superb. And, and they know God and the things that's going to happen in the future is going to be fantastic. It's going to be blessings, blessings, blessings. And having said that, lots of work as well in Jesus' name. So thank you all, every person. You know, just wonderful. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Lovely. And then just before I hand over to Pastor Davi, who's going to preach for us this morning, then um, we are still compiling our card that's going to go to St. Mary's congregation. Uh, they don't, you know, they keep kind of postponing their closure, which actually is really nice. Uh, but um, it'll be handed over to them next week so that they can start to sign their names. And then the, the two churches blend together in terms of all the signatures. So um, catch the, the card at the end. If you don't catch it, then John Colvin will catch you, and uh, he'll remind you to sign it there. Thanks, John, for organizing this. It's been great. Give him a round of applause, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the one thing that remains 
is for me to introduce to you a youth, young adults pastor and all around great guy, Pastor David Santos. Thanks, Pastor Mort. Good morning, friends. How's it going? Thank you so much, Big Will. I am so clumsy. I'm going to pop this here where it's safe. Um, far away from me. Thank you. Um, how's everybody getting on? The sun is bright. Yeah. Interesting thing about this country is that the sun is good for illuminating. Um, not so much for heating and warming you up. Uh, but it helps us see. It helps us see. Um, everybody's looking fresh. Everybody's looking cozy with scarves and jackets. Do you want to look at somebody who's beside you and say, hey, you look fresh this morning, by the way. You look fresh. <laughs> Whatever that means. Um, God is so good. Um, we were, I'm about to read from the Bible right now, a passage of scripture from a letter uh, written to the Philippines. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at it together and, and we're going to pray that God shows us something that we haven't seen before. And he speaks to us. The great thing is that God is here with us. And this is exciting. I think that's what I love about this is that, you know, um, we, we get to engage together as a family. I think it's so beautiful. Um, seeing the story, for example, of Clive and Mavis, um, you know, now going to this ne next chapter, this new season in their lives, um, but just so many memories. You know, um, Clive and Mavis obviously have been around uh, and they've been a part of this church for longer than I am alive. Um, and they are um, good friends with my parents as well. And, and my parents send their wishes, their best wishes for you guys and your family as well. Um, it's beautiful how we can connect and we can all be one. And wherever we go, whatever city or country, we are the church of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to read now um, from Philippians chapter 2. Um, I'm going to re read from verse 1 to 11, and then chapter 3 from 12 to 14. I'm going to give a huge shout out to Raf and the team upstairs tonight. If you want to, uh, this, this morning, if you want to, what's up Raf? You're doing so well, my man, commanding the ship. Let's go. Um, it's so good to see just new faces, new people getting involved. Um, and by the way, um, if you are technical, and if this is, this is something that you enjoy, if you're good with computers, come and speak to Mark or the media team, Peter Marshall, afterwards, uh, because we're looking for help, aren't we? And, and, and it's so good to have uh, people um, involved. So yeah, thanks for that, Raf. Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. The title is, Have the Same Attitude of Christ. Here we go. It says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love? Any fellowship together in the spirit? Are your hearts tender and compassionate? Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other loving one another and working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. 
Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess, declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14 says, Not that I have already obtained it. This goal of being Christ-like. Or have already been made perfect. But I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on toward the goal. I want to invite you guys to join me in prayer just now as we connect with, with God this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you are here. Thank you that you love us so much. And, and you want to speak to us this morning. God, I pray that you will open our hearts up and our minds so that we will be ready to listen to whatever it is you have for us this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray against any interruptions, any distractions. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will speak to me and through me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So recently, some of you guys who, who know me, I started attempting a new sport. I, this is February, okay, February this year, uh, for one reason or another, I got involved in an ice hockey team. <laughs> Not only I got involved, but I actually joined the team. Um, I remember chatting to my mom about this, she's like, that's, that's a really quick recipe for disaster. <laughs> See, like, ice hockey is nothing like anything that I had ever experienced before. Growing up, back home, football is the thing. We keep it simple. You just need the ball. <laughs> you get on with it. Ice hockey is a different language, different universe. It's so strange in the best way possible. Um, it, it got a hold of me. It's something that actually I've been admiring and watching for years, but I never thought I'd ever have a go at. Uh, but in February, um, I, I started attending some of the training sessions. The guys, you know how it is, uh, really, really welcoming and nice, and, and one thing led to another, and I joined a team. Now let me explain, this team is split into squad A and squad B. A long story short, squad A know what they're doing. <laughs> Davi Santos is in the Lowland Raiders squad B. <laughs> and as you could guess, everybody in that selection um, is, is having a hard time. We're trying to stay up. We're trying to like not slip. This is slippery, bro. Like what's going on? Um, um, what are you trying to balance on edges? You've got all this stuff, pads, protection, helmets. Um, yeah, it's a weird definition of fun. Uh, but you, you, you're basically trying to survive. You're trying to survive. Never mind, watch your back, because tackles are allowed. In fact, they're encouraged. Um, so yeah, pray for me. Thank you. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's like, I really need help. But here's the thing um, with, with the idea of ice hockey is that literally 
It's the community spirit, like in sports in general, you know how it is. If you're into sports, you know what it's like to engage with a team, to be part of a, of a, a team. Something special and precious about that. The coaches, there's two coaches, and they're, they're um, retired players. They used to play for the Solway Sharks, and they're really, really good. They really know what they're doing. And, and they're really sound people. And, um, and since February, during the training sessions on a Sunday evening, um, uh, sometimes they'll arrange friendlies, so games uh, among ourselves. And they'll have, um, and they'll mix up the players, and they'll have everybody have a go. Now, I've not been a part of an official game yet for very obvious reasons. Um, but these scrimmages that they organize during training sessions are great opportunities for us to feel a little bit of the pressure of what it's like to be in a game scenario. Uh, one of the coaches, a um, re really nice guy, um, in one particular session, um, he came onto my team. And, and he basically picked, handpicked some of the better players. But then he added me in the mix just to jazz it up. Let's just put this guy in the middle, see what happens. And, and he's like, let's go, let's go, man. Obviously, these guys' this pace is insane. Like, they're skating, like, ridiculously fast, and, and they're not thinking about anything. They're just doing it. It's amazing. Um, and I'm lost in the middle, like, help. And, and during this particular scrimmage, um, the coach came up to me and said, listen up, Davey. I give up explaining how to pronounce my name. Like, it's, call me whatever you want, man. Listen up, Davey. I'm going to need you to position yourself to score. All right? We're going to do the hard work. We're going to do all the hard work. But we're going to get the puck to you. Right? Here's the interesting thing, right? It's everybody, like a bunch of grown men, chasing after this. That's basically what the sport is, okay? on ice. It's <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> uh, position yourself to score, okay? Um, and, and he said, don't worry about the offside rule for now, because if you try to stay inside, like by time, <laughs> it's not going to work. Just stay close to the goal. Anyway, so we started the game. The play starts. Coach passing the puck, getting on with it, getting really close. And then instead of shooting, they look for me. And that was the agreement of the team. That none of them would score except me. And they said, look, we, we could take shots, but we're going to leave the, the you know, with the final kind of execution to the big man, Davey. OK, so I'm like, OK, cool. So I'm standing next to the goal. I'm like, don't worry. All I have to do is shoot. All you have to do is shoot. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And they do all the hard work. I see it coming. They pass the puck. Oop, missed it. Oops. Oops, there goes the puck, and it's quick, and it's back there, and never mind. And then they, and the game continues, the game continues, and all of a sudden they, they regain possession. And again, again, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, about to shoot, no, where's Davey? Davey! And I miss again. And at this point, I'm starting to feel embarrassed, because I'm like, Is, are they actually training me, or are they trying to make a point? <laughs> I forgot to mention, there's not that many people in Team B, you know? Come on, man, it's just you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. There's a couple of people who joined since. But here's the thing. They kept doing the play, the same play. And then eventually, I started managing to get possession of the puck. But then I shoot and miss. And again, shoot and miss. Listen, I don't know how many times I missed that shot. But honestly, if you were there, you'd be thinking, bro, sit down. <laughs> You're not helping anybody right now. Um, I was doing my best. I was doing my best. But it just wasn't hitting it. It just wasn't hitting it. I also kept trying to go after the puck. Thank you very much. I've got a brand new microphone. Thank you, Jack. See, here's what happens. I start losing my position. He's saying, stay still. And I'm like, I'm trying to help. And like, You're not helping at all. <laughs> Instead of trying to join what the rest of the team is doing, play your part. Play your part. Position yourself to score. 
Here's the thing, eventually the guys broke the rule a little bit and they're like, you know, let's start taking some shots just here and there. And they started scoring. And, and my team started winning. In fact, we, they scored a lot. They scored a lot of goals. And it got to the point where there was no way the other team was gonna catch up. We already won the match. And then they, the, they put the rule back on. I was like, okay, now, now it's all Davy. Now it's all Davy. Okay, we do not shoot anymore. So they guaranteed the win. They guaranteed the win. But now they're giving me a shot again. And I kept, I kept missing, I kept missing. And the goaltender was just staring at me, thinking, like laughing. He was just having a conversation with me. And be like, oh, good effort, man, good effort. But you suck. <laughs> Until eventually I managed to score one goal. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and that was absolutely humiliating. But here's, here's the interesting thing. Um, be it hockey, be it um, whatever sport, there's always a common goal. Everybody's trying to chase something. They're trying to achieve a certain goal. In, case of, in, in, in this example, um, it's simply to get the puck in the net. Do you know, um, we've been in this uh, sort of series in the past few weeks speaking about um, sin and speaking about shame and guilt. And, and we've been having some really, really healthy conversations about, around these topics. And do you know the original definition of sin? It simply means to miss the goal. It's, it's a Hebrew word that I worked hard to learn to pronounce. It's, it's spelled K-H-A-T-A, pronounced hatah. Hatah. I think that's about right, John Coven, maybe? <laughs> hatah. And it simply means to miss the goal. Like in, in Judges, Judges chapter 20, verse 16, there's an example. Like when the Israelite tribe of Benjamin trained a small army of slingshot experts, they could sling a stone at a hair and not hata, or, or to fail or miss. That's a Judges, Judges chapter 20, verse 16. To hata is to miss. What I'm going to do here, guys, is really simple. I'm going to make a quick parallel um, between the passage of scripture that we just read and the game of hockey. And we're gonna have a, just a quick chat about that. And then we're gonna continue worshiping God. And, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to us right now. Um, and that we will be attent to whatever it is that he's trying to speak to us. It's, he communicates differently and individually to all of us. And I think this is so exciting. Here, in Philippians, Chapter 3, um, that we just read, in verse 13b, so just the latter part of the, of the verse, it mentions forgetting what lies behind. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Forgetting what, what lies behind. Sometimes... In our Christian walk, we, we can become so aware of our weakness. We can become so aware of our failures that we, we get robbed from our awareness of our God. I'll say that again. In our Christian walk, we can become so aware of our weakness that it robs us from our awareness of our God. Just going back to the game scenario again. Imagine, for instance, that we've got a situation where coach passes the puck to a weaker player. 
<laughs> that would be me. And, and, and I receive the puck and I'm about to score. And I take a shot and I miss. And, and I miss. Imagine this is a real game. Imagine now that I missed the shot and all of a sudden my attitude is like, you know what? What's the point of trying, man? This is so embarrassing. Stick goes away. Just start skating towards the side of the ice. Do you know, there's one thing for sure that I can guarantee you. The coach would never let me get away with such an attitude. Do you know what the coach would do? Oh, you Davy! <laughs> Davy! What are you doing, man? Get back here. We're going to need you. Position yourself to score. I believe that when it comes to a Christian walk, it is no different. That mistakes are made and mess ups. And, and, and we, we didn't start mistaking repentance with um, dwelling in self-pity. And, and just staying in a dark place where I'm no good. And you start believing lies. And you start allowing that to consume you, from, consume you from the inside out. This morning, the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us seriously about positioning ourselves to score. And I'm not talking about hockey. Do you know, Jesus, he believes in you. <laughs> God believes in you so much. Even if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. And when it comes to us acknowledging our filth, our dirt, our mistakes, we need to remember that repentance, reten repentance is all about turning around, turning around. Realizing, do you know what? My way didn't work. Do you know, I thought I had this, but it's not. I'm going to start listening to somebody who knows better. You know, I've tried a few things, and, and this is not working. Repentance is turning around and having another shot. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 and 14, we also read. 12 to 14, it reads... Not that I have already obtained this goal of being Christ-like or have already been made perfect. This is chapter 3, verse 12. Um, not that I have already obtained this goal of being Christ-like or have already been made perfect, but I actively press on so that I may take hold of that perfection for which Christ Jesus took hold of me and made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal. I press on toward the goal. Thinking about hitting the mark. If sin is missing the goal, if sin is missing the mark, then what is hitting the goal? What is the goal? I press on toward the goal. Here's the thing. We all know the Genesis story. And do you know that our reality and what we know today as normal this is not how life was designed to be. You know, back in the Garden of Eden, man and woman and God, they, they walked together in communion, in perfection. You know, perfection was normal. Yes? Per perfection was how God designed you and me to be originally. 
perfect human beings made in the image of their creator, God. Do you know that? This might be first for some of you guys, you might be hearing this for the first time, but you are made in the image of God. The thing about this idea of perfection is that when we look at it from this perspective where we live in now, in this day and age, the idea of perfection, where it's not, it's not very attractive. I don't know about you guys, but perfection these days is not cool. It, it's weird. I don't know about you, but when I think of perfect people, I think of that one guy in class that gets everything right. Teacher's pet. When I think about perfect people, I think about the goody two shoe. <sighs> By the way, if <laughs> like if that was you, um, I better not say anything. <laughs> but that's so annoying. It could be so annoying because people just don't make any mistakes, and they can be so self-righteous, and they could be so perfect, and they get all the high grades. And they never fail, and they're amazing. If that's perfection, I don't want anything to do with that kind of perfection. The thing about perfection is that we, well, we've never really met a perfect person. <laughs> and, and, and our idea of perfection is distorted because we're looking at it from the wrong point of view, from the wrong perspective. We're looking at per perfection from a fallen creation perspective. Do you know, if, if there was a perfect person, I'm sure that you and I, we, we would wanna stay away, or we would not want to acquaint with that because we wouldn't understand, we wouldn't recognize, and that's exactly what happened. You see, we despised the perfect one. You know, humanity, humans expected grandeur. Light, a show. So we didn't recognize perfection when it was looking us in the eyes. Do you know, as a human race, we missed perfection. The perfect one was born in a manger. The perfect one got on his knees to wash his traitor's feet. The perfect one died on a cross for his enemies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Philippians chapter 2, Verse 6 to 11, it, talks to, it tells us about the perfect one. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. My prayer this morning for us is that God would make us aware of him <laughs> more than we are aware of us. It's easy to be aware of us, isn't it? 
You wake up with yourself every day. You look in the mirror, you get dressed, you go to work, you come to church, you're aware of you and that's normal. But the challenge and the calling is for us to grow in awareness of our savior, our King, Jesus Christ. He's not only here, but he's within you, believer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make us aware, Jesus, of you. What would it look like, guys? What would it look like? Imagine with me for a second, a people. The church of Jesus Christ, you and me, a people who were aware of the name that is on the back of their jerseys. Do you know Christian is simply Christ one. Christ one. That's you. Do you know in Galatians chapter two, verse 20 to 21, it says that, it says, we have been crucified with Christ as you and me. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Galatians 2, 20 to 21, Raph. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. We do not set aside the grace of God. The grace of God is the ways, the means by which we score. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a shot. God has done all the hard work for us. He's already won on our behalf. And he set it all up so that now we can have a shot at scoring. The game does not depend on our goals. <laughs> Are you with me? Am I making sense? This isn't about ice hockey anymore. <laughs> God, thank you that you are with us. Thank you, God. Do you know when it comes to hitting targets, hitting goals, um, we, we can, be, we can be super precise about the way we go about things. You know, maybe you're here and, and you're listening and, and you're a Christian, you're, you've been around, you've been around church, this is not new to you. And you've been very precise about the way you go about your walk with Jesus. But sometimes we can be so precise but still miss the target. Do you know, one thing that the coach told me when I was taking shots, I missed pretty much every single shot. And he came up to me, he's like, don't worry about it. You had 100% precision. I'm like, how do you mean? He's like, every single shot you took, Davey, was off target. <laughs> That's 100% precision. <laughs> what we need is to be accurate. Do you know, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul, he was precise about the way he was going through things. If you read Philippians, it's four chapters only. It's, it's, it's what we need to do this afternoon, by the way. We need to read Philippians before we get into encounter tonight. This is what we're going to do as a church. Amen? Because what happens is Apostle Paul, he was precise about the way he lived. He was a Pharisee, intellectual goody two-shoe, did everything right, super precise, but inaccurate, inaccurate. He had an encounter with the living Jesus, and all of a sudden, Jesus helped him turn around, 
turn around to aim to the right target. I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit of the living God would help us as a church family to turn around. Turn around. Thank you, Jesus, for calling us to hit shots on target, to love one another. It's the kind of shot that takes accuracy. To be patient. <laughs> Tell me about that one. <laughs> to be kind. To be generous. To be Christ-like. There is no ways we will ever achieve perfection if it's not through the means of grace. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. That's you and I. But Christ who lives in us and the life which we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved you and me and gave himself for us. We do not set aside the grace of God. Because righteousness does not come through the law. It comes through the grace, which is the gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. I believe the Holy Spirit's inviting us to position ourselves to score this morning. And you know, contrary to what the world brags about, do you know what's the best position as a Christ one? If there's Christ one on the back of your jersey, if you've signed up for this, if you are a part of the team, the best position we can find ourselves as Jesus followers is, is like this. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I surrender to you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. This is the strongest position that you can be in. This is how you score. It's dependence, complete dependence on God. The Holy Spirit is inviting us to a place of desperation. I need you, Jesus. This is my desire. Not just to sing a pretty song that sounds nice and is nostalgic, but it's what I need. I'm going to invite the worship team to come and start worshiping already um, because it's what we're here to do. Um, and we're going to engage together as a family. I want to encourage you guys to avoid distractions. I know these are all very beautiful people, <laughs> but let's not miss the point. Thank you, Jesus, that you want to help us turn around and position ourselves. The goal of being Christ-like, the goal of having Jesus living within us, maybe you're here and you're listening to this and it's all foreign language. Maybe you're here connecting from home or you're in the building and you've never heard of this. You say, what's this guy on about, man? He lost me at ice hockey. Here's the thing, there's an invitation. There's an invitation and this is why the church is here. There's an invitation that we brag about, we boast about. It's the invitation that Jesus makes to every single human being is to believe in him, to believe in him. If you're here this morning and and, and, and you're debating and thinking, can I tell you, this is the best decision I've ever made in my life, was the decision to give my life to my savior, Jesus Christ, and let him be the one to guide me. Let him be my coach. Maybe you've got a wrong image of Jesus. Maybe you see Jesus as the coach who's a nasty coach shouting you down, being like, get on the bench, man, you're useless. 
Maybe this was the kind of Jesus that you, you kind of got used to and you believe, but that is not my Jesus. That is not the savior of humanity, the Messiah. Jesus Christ, King of Kings, he loves you and he's here to give you a shot. He won the game on your behalf. Now he's expecting you to take a shot and take another shot until we score. Accuracy and precision in the name of Jesus is what we're seeking. There's a reason why we worship. There's a reason why we have encounters. There's a reason why you get up on a Sunday morning instead of lying in. It's because we're here to depend and exalt the one name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. You're welcome to stand up and worship. This is not a performance, it's not a TED talk. This is not like, a, this is church. And we are here to raise the single name, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, I pray for everybody right now. Everybody under the sound of my voice who has been touched by you. Holy Spirit, you are here with us. I pray that you will help us position ourselves to score. Jesus, we believe in you. We need you. We trust you. If you're here and you've not given your life to Jesus, you can repeat after me. This is a simple prayer. It's, it's simply Jesus. I recognize that I've missed so many shots. And I recognize that you want to help me score. I believe, Jesus, that you want to restore relationship with us like it was in Eden. Pure connection, holiness. It's not about goody tushu. Holiness, hallelujah, holiness in the name of Jesus is what God has in store for all of us who believe Jesus. I pray that you would just take my life. We, we give our lives to you right now. In Jesus' name. If you made that prayer in your heart, wherever you are at home or in the building, I just want to encourage you that this is not the only sentence you're going to tell God. This is be a beginning of a lifetime conversation. We're going to keep talking to Jesus every day because he's in you hallelujah let's worship him let's worship let's sing you're turning you're turning over tables and calling for return to our lives upon the altar the thing did at first. You're clearing out the temple. You're cleaning out the dirt. For we are your territory. And Lord, we are your church. We are your people. And you
Hallelujah, Jesus. Make us holy. That's great. Great way to finish on the prayer of that last song. And I'm, I'm so glad to be a Jesus follower, especially after what I've heard this morning. It just uh, makes you think, well, there's no other way to live, is there? You really, you'd, <laughs> otherwise you're going to totally miss the mark. But being part of God's team, wow, changes everything. Lord, we thank you for what you've spoken into our hearts this morning. We seal it in, Lord, by the confession of our mouth, by the response of our hearts to make you 100% Lord and to take you as our Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Thank you for making this all possible through your sacrifice. Thank you you're alive today interceding for us, coaching us, just being with us every step of the way. Thank you, Lord. We honor you, worship you, and thank you. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you've made a decision this morning, whether it's to surrender or resurrender, it's great to talk about it, you know, tell people over coffee what you've done. I know it's a private thing, but it really can help a lot if you share it with someone you trust. Just cements it. Great. Woo. Well, thanks for coming this morning. Thanks for being part of church. And I want to say a special thank you to Dami, to Raphael, for Sam, who are all uh, kind of early beginners, but I really picked it up well. It's great you had to have you on the media team, and you're doing a great job. Fantastic. All of you, thanks for being you. And God bless. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget, tomorrow, Kings. Tonight, Kings. Six o'clock for Encounter.